in all these different realities, there are places where other consciousness, other, whether sentient beings exist for real. And I remember the first time I saw a being from what I call, I used to call it the dragon, but it's not, it's the reptilian, we call it the reptilian world now. And these beings from that particular realm, some of them have literally come into our dimension and people dress up as these beings that they see. I remember the very first time that I met one of these one of these beings. This was back in like 1987. I was doing a I was doing a entity removal. Back then it was very different than now. And I could feel that this next person I was going to be talking to, I could feel that one that was it was dangerous. So I actually physically moved my body back, back away. And so I started talking to it, and it started calling himself the Emerald Prince. I'm like, the Emerald Prince, you know, okay. And then pretty soon, then I start to see the energy, and it was like a dragon-looking creature. And he told me that, um, that human beings disgusted him. And I asked, well, why are you here? And he goes, I was sent here. He was sent here to learn different things, learn compassion, learn, learn about, you know, the human, human aspects of, of emotions. And when I took him out of the body, I actually called forth, like there was a, like this master being of that particular realm that came for him and, and then had, he couldn't get out, so I had to pull, help pull him out of the physical body and released him. When we were done with the session, the guy that I was working with, his name was Dan, and he said he had to hold his body to keep from hitting me. He could feel that this thing just really wanted to hurt me but he was like really holding so that it wouldn't happen. He actually drew a picture of the dragon that I still have. I didn't tell him what it looked like. I didn't tell him it was a dragon. He just drew this picture after the clearing. So that was the opening for me. That was the beginning of realizing that particular realm. But then shortly after that, these, you guys, you know the leprechauns? Mm -hmm. Guess where they got leprechauns from? Not from Ireland. <laughs> They got them from the red planet. There's a red planet that's not too far from the, the reptilian world. And they got these little pointy ears and little tiny things. They talk really fast, but they do all those little leprechaun things. So when I was releasing some of them, taking them home, we were get, they, they were like freaking out because they don't, want to get, don't get too close to that reptilian world because they, they would actually come over and, and attack these little creatures, these little beings. So they were terrified of them. So it just started opening up the ability to start looking and sensing that there's so much more. So we have all kinds of different realms, all kinds. And there's all kinds of species that literally have come here that are in other dimensions and overlays. Like if we shift our awareness, like if we want, we can literally shift our consciousness, shift our awareness, and we can open up to begin to see and feel the different layers or the different um, sentient beings that are in the overlay of our realm right here. So right now, when I shift my awareness, I can shift it and open up to several different realms or several different dimensions that are here. Now we can keep expanding and expanding our consciousness and awareness and we'll begin to feel and sense those 15 or 12 different dimensions and realms. But if we keep going, then it becomes, it, you know, it becomes wild. It's like there's hundreds of things happening simultaneously right here, okay? And then we can all just close it all off and just be right back here in our world. But the thing is, is with the veils thinning, more things are coming through. There's actual little insect looking things. There's little creatures. There's reptilian energies. There's, um, Oh, uh, I mean, this, there's blobs of energy that just are floating through the different dimensions that get landed inside people's bodies. There's these, like, these other creatures that look like octopus things that usually, especially things like when I see cancer, or I see tumors, or things of that nature where you've got something forming or growing in the body, I guarantee you, if you really start scanning, you're going to find these little creatures because what they do is they get into the body and then they, the energy starts, they start doing something, I don't know what they do, but they, the energy starts to collect and then you get cancerous cells, you get tumors, and they're feeding off of those while these things are also growing. And these creatures start off like these little tiny 
minute little, sometimes they look like little ticks, but by the time the, the, the tumor has grown and gotten bigger and bigger, that thing's going to be a pretty good size. Okay, so I've had somebody that had a tumor, we took that energy out of the body, she stopped bleeding. She was bleeding like continually every day, never stopped. And wait, hang, yeah, she'd go and have to sit in a bathtub and that during periods of time of bleeding. But anyway, so taking these things out allows for healing, more healing to happen. Okay, so this is all interdimensional things that are occurring to people's bodies. And then we also have um, interferences that are coming from these other dimensions, as most of you know from studying. And also, what we also have, which is not good, or we have like the minions and the servants of the powers of darkness. And sometimes these energies are even demonic energies. And those can literally be inside the body, around the body. Uh, sometimes the minions can be in service affecting you and not be right close to you. They can still be affecting you, but they're going to be further away. You know, they could be um, 10 feet away, 15, 50 feet away, and still have the power and ability to affect who you are, affect your well-being, affect your thoughts, and affecting um, your behaviors, things of that nature. And then we have the energetic implants. These are all interdimensional things. These are all things coming not from this world. And in energetic implants can actually affect your emotions. They can affect your, your thoughts, your behaviors your desires, your fears, your phobias. And these implants can be little tiny specks of energy, and then sometimes they can be really big, 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 massive energies inside. And when we are taking these things out, people feel immediate shifts and changes by just releasing these. I had a friend that, um, I've said this before, but I don't think I did it where we're screening it, where he couldn't turn his head for about 15 years, you know, to the side. It would stop, pain, discomfort. And he'd been to lots of different chiropractors. He'd done all kinds of different healing modalities of work. There's all kinds of different ways of working. Aspire is one of them. Um, I don't remember all of them, but there's all these different methodologies of clearings, things of that nature. You know, he'd been doing all of them. He was a chiropractor himself. And he's talking, and I'm looking, and I just reach over and pull this implant out, and it was over just like that. I had just talked to him like maybe three years later. This, I did this in 2010 and I talked to him several times, but the last time I talked to him was probably earlier this year. And uh, he's still good. So it's gone. Bottom line is, is implants can affect your body. They can affect pain. They can affect, you know, lots of different things physically inside. So people that are doing this kind of work, you know, you want to check for implants when people have illnesses or diseases or emotional stuff or physical things. So those are always uh, cool to remove. So the, these alternate realities, these interdimensional places, it's like there's a lot happening that we don't see with our eyes. And like I said, with the veils getting thinner, more things are able to pass through. And also, it becomes easier to send things back where they belong, okay? To send things back into the realms that they belong in, and their dimensions, and their time and space. So, you know, it's like it's easy to, to start moving, moving these energies.